Okay, welcome to part three of my little golden book junk journal tutorials. In part one, we made this cover. In part two, we put together these signatures. And now in part three, we are going to decorate these signatures. Um, everything I do in this video is totally optional. You can decorate your journal however you want. There's millions of ways to do it, and this is just like very minimal embellishments. I'm not going to get into the actual like filling pockets and adding ephemera and stuff like that. This is just how I decorate the pages before um, before we sew it. And uh, these are things that can't be done after you sew the book together. So, um, the things we're going to be doing are punching edges, um, sewing around pages, inking around pages, and stamping and stenciling. So that's what we're going to be focused on today. I'll probably do one um, signature with you. We'll see how it goes for time-wise. And uh, the first thing that I usually do is punch edges. So I have all these edge punches. And I have some corner punches. And um, that's just something I like to do. You don't have to do it. Like I said before, this is all optional. So you just do whatever you like to do. Um, but actually, the very, very first thing that I'm going to do is um, trim these book pages down. Because you'll remember from the last episode that um the pages from the little golden book are a little bit too long so what i'm gonna do is just mark them where they need to be cut and then we'll open up the signatures and pull them out one at a time And then we'll just, I take these um, paper edge trimmers. That's just what I like to use. You can cut it straight if you'd like. If there's any writing, you're going to want to try to make sure that you're not cutting it off. And I'm really bad at cutting straight. So mine usually don't turn out that straight, but it's fine. Okay. So there's one. This might get cut off a little bit, but we'll see. We just made it. All right. And then we'll do the third one. Okay, perfect. Now they all fit in there. This one's a little long, but it's okay because we're gonna add lace and stuff. So if some of the pages are a little longer, then that's okay. And then you'll remember that um, it's the first and third signatures that had those um, book pages in. So we'll just do the same exact thing. For the third signature.
and done. And now that's all done. Let's clean up a little bit. And this next part gets pretty messy. Um, we are going to be doing the hole punching or the edge punching. So I'm going to actually do this one because it's got some music paper in it. And I think my um, the first signature doesn't have that. So uh, I'll just do, use this one as the example and we'll do all the steps together on this signature. So um, first thing you want to do is pick your edge punch you want to use. And for this one, I think I'm going to use this. So if you don't know how to use an edge punch, they're kind of tricky. I had a really hard time at first. But what you want to do is line up with this corner, punch it, and then you'll take um, where you see these and line those up with that. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Always make sure one is inside. So then you'll just line it up with the pattern right here. There we go. And then, um, for this one has a pocket, so I'm going to open it up and we will edge punch And then when you fold the pocket, it'll be like that. Just a little decorative flair. Okay. And then for this one, maybe we'll do the corners. So I'll take my corner punch. That's why I said it's messy. It makes a mess everywhere. If you don't have edge punches, you don't have to do this part at all. When I first started, I think I only I only had this, so. And then the plain papers, I like to do sewing around those, so we're not going to edge punch that. Um, keep that in mind. Just think about, I mean, I personally hardly ever have any forethought about anything that I do when I'm making these journals, but it helps if you try to have a little forethought. So this one I'm going to do some punching on. So for me, I do all of the plain tea dyed paper, I do sewing around those edges. So I usually don't punch those ones. And then sometimes I'll have a little extra hanging off here. We'll just cut that off. Okay, cut off this little extra piece, and there we go. This one we'll probably do sewing around. This page has pockets, so what I like to do with these ones is maybe do the edges and then do the top of the pocket edges. And I will probably do sewing around this too, to close the pocket, but that's okay. This one, maybe we'll do sewing. These are really nice to do 
a little lace edge. Now this Fiskars one, it kind of sucks. Let me move this out of the way for a second. My papers get jammed in this one all the time. They're like stuck. You just have to pull it out and then every time make sure you clear it out. And I really don't like it. I would recommend not getting this one. But I like how it looks. So I put up with it. Sorry if you hear my dog in the background. Oops. I've done that before too, where you accidentally miss one. That's why you have to make sure one's inside. There you go. And we'll do the other side. See what a mess it's making. This one, these ones have like things that catch, but this one doesn't. So that's another reason why this one's annoying. But it looks so nice. So. There we go. This one. Maybe I'll do this flower punch again. Now this would look nice with an edge punch. I think maybe we'll do this one. Sorry, it just got dark in here. It's cloudy today, so. My natural light is Fading. Okay. Probably leave that one. Leave, leave. One will look nice with an edge punch, I think. Now, these scrapbook papers are a little harder to get through. This one will not cut scrapbook papers. I have to, like, manually unjam it when I use that one with scrapbook paper, so. It's kind of a pain. go. That'll be a nice pretty little pocket now. We're almost done with this step. Sorry, it's boring. This one, I think I'm just going to do, well, 
we'll use this one again. See why we cut this paper longer so it doesn't end up cutting any of the words when we punch it. Normally I clean this up as I go to so there's just not a huge mess everywhere, but I just want to get this done quickly for you guys. And I'm sorry if this is boring, but I thought some people might want to see the whole process. I know there's like a lot of videos out there, but they kind of skip through a lot of things, so... Feel free to, you know, skip over the parts you don't need to know about. There we go. And then we're going to corner punch this. And then think we should punch the edges of this too. So what did we just do? Maybe the flower? Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to leave it. I kind of like it straight like that. Okay, so that's step one. Um, just pick which pages you want to edge punch and keep in mind which ones you want to do the sewing around and stuff. I need to cut this a little bit shorter. It's a little too long. It's bugging me. There you go. Okay. So that's step one. And then um, I'm going to clean this up and do the other signatures real quick. And then um, we'll move on to the sewing. Okay, now we're back with my sewing machine. This is going to be, sorry, this is going to be the um, sewing part. Um, as you can see, I finished um, with the punches on the rest of the signatures. So now we're going to start sewing. Um, I feel like it's going to be loud, so... I don't know how much of this I'll show you, but I wanted to show you a couple different stitches. Also, I'm standing, which normally I sit when I sew, so bear with me. Um, I'm just using this blue thread because that was what was in my sewing machine already. So, uh, first we're going to start with the first page, which is a pocket page. So, make sure we're all threaded up right here. It isn't so oopsie I highly recommend this little sewing machine by the way if you don't have a sewing machine again this is optional you don't have to sew but it's personally my favorite part um, I'm not good at sewing I've never sewed really anything before this oops Okay, anyways, I've never really sewed anything before this. Um, I'm not really a good sewer. I just bought this little machine. It was like 50 bucks off of Amazon, and I love it. It's got all these different stitches on it. Um, it's easy to thread. 
I mean, it's pretty simple to use. I didn't know how to sew before and I just kind of picked this up and started teaching myself. So highly recommend if you want to sew but you think it's too expensive to get into it. So anyways, um, I'm going to start with a nice zigzag stitch and you just stick it in, put the foot down, and then we'll sew. Sorry if this is really loud. Now, now you could just sew the pockets um, and then stop, but I'm going to sew up the side. Like this and then we'll do the same thing on the other side Okay, then I just cut all the threads off short. I know some people like to keep them long, but I don't. At least not for these journals. Now, we're also going to sew lace onto this, so if you had any forethought at all, you could do that at the same time, but I usually don't because I don't know where I want to put the lace until afterwards. But I'm going to show you how I do around, like, on regular tea dyed paper. Um... Mostly I just go around and I try to switch up the stitches. So this one will do a six. And then whichever one's the bottom corner, that's where I like to start mine. Then when you get to a corner, I just lift the leg, spin, oops, don't do that, and then put it back down. You see, I usually try to line the edge of the paper up with the inside of this foot, but if it doesn't end up that way, I don't really worry about it. Then we'll just cut that off. And then that's how that stitch looks, which I really love. That's probably one of my favorite. And then I don't sew on these pages, but we will sew tabs on there later. Let me show you um, if I use a straight stitch. I don't really like doing just straight around. And also you want to be careful. So here one and two and four actually. They are... Um, the stitches are super close to each other and when you're sewing on paper you want to watch out for stitches that are too close to each other because you'll end up just cutting the paper so I usually do stitch three when I'm doing a straight stitch and I don't really like um, like straight straight 
let me show you. So I'll put this one a little wide here. And we'll go around just straight. See, I'm not really good at going in a straight line, so that's why I don't really like doing this, but I'll show you. What. Then, um... I don't really like how the stitches look on the straight stitch. I don't know if you can see, but they just look kind of messy. I don't know. Now, before we get up to this next corner, um, I'm going to kind of hold the paper on both sides, and when it gets there, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to instead start waving it, so I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just moving the paper back and forth. So you saw that I didn't uh, stop when I got to the edges, you just curl the paper around and ends up looking like this, which I think is super cute. Um, and that just takes a little practice to get used to, so if that's something you want to do, you know, just practice. Uh, I'll show you, let's see, like just a couple more. I'm going to sew most of these pages, but I'm going to skip some so that... I can show you a couple more things. So, um, this one, maybe I'll just do a loose zigzag. I try to make every page a little different, or if I end up, this doesn't have like a ton ton of different things, I'll spread them out throughout the signatures, so there's not like a ton in a row, so. This is just a zigzag stitch. There you go, just a simple zigzag, easy enough. Um, this one's a side pocket, so I'll show you how we do that. We're gonna, cause we're not gonna wanna sew this part where the pocket is, but I'm gonna sew all the way around the rest of it. Actually, you know what I might do? No, I'm not going to. Um, let's see, what stitch? Let's do a tighter zigzag. It's a little slower when you go on this thicker paper.
Oops. Oh, it's so hard not to accidentally hit the pedal when I'm standing. Okay. Okay. So this part's like unnecessary, but it just adds a little extra something. And then I'm gonna show you one last stitch I like to do. It's kind of like the one we just did with the, like this one, but it's without the straight stitch at the beginning. So I'll just use a regular straight stitch. And we'll start at the bottom corner. Let's see, it's kind of like, actually, I'm gonna start it like this. And then you're gonna wanna hold both edges of the paper like this. Just like that. They end up with like this kind of wavy. So you don't want to stop and start like I did so much in that. Because you can see where that happens. But it doesn't really matter if it if you have to. It's just hard for me to sew standing up. But So that's just some of the stitches. I'm going to finish up this one and then finish up um, the rest of the signatures. Oh, one more thing. The music pages that have pockets, I usually like to ink the edges of these, and we'll do inking and stamping later, but um, I'll just ink up this edge that I'm going to be sewing before you sew it, because otherwise it'll be hard for you to ink it up. So most of the inking we do afterwards, but if you want to just do your inking for any pages that are going to have sewing on them. It's not a bad idea. And then that'll be over like this. I don't do much inking um, around the edges for this type of journal anyway because it's, you know, supposed to be just like more cutesy, but I feel like it shows the pockets a little better on ones like this, so. See? So then when I do the sewing around, I don't have to worry about inking. I think that's the only one that I have in this particular journal that needs inking first, but I just wanted to make you aware of that. And in case you're wondering, I use the Distressed Oxide and Vintage Photo for my inking. I also just got worn lipstick, and I really like using this if I'm trying to go for like a more cutesy instead of a vintage. I just made this other journal. Quick side note. And I had to ink all of these pages and it took forever, but this is like, just like a rustic. Anyways, I'll come back when all of this is sewn up and then we're going to do lace, we're going to do some tabs, and then we'll do stamping and stenciling. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention, uh, I forgot, these pages that are the 
little golden book pages. You'll remember in the last uh, part two, we just glued them together with a glue stick so they're not very um, together. If you want to go ahead and take a zigzag stitch and then just go ahead and you go down the middle. That way, they're not going to come apart. So, just do that for all six of the pages. Plus, it gives, I mean, looks a little extra. So, just throwing that out there. That's something you want to do with this first pass of sewing for sure. We have successfully gone ahead and. Stitched all the way around all the pages and all three of the signatures. So, um, next thing we're going to do is add some lace, which you could totally do at the same time as sewing, but I just never do anything in the right order. So, uh, I have... just a crazy amount of lace and so what we're going to do is so Simone I'm just going to do one signature with you again because I think you'll get the gist but basically we'll take some of this let me zoom back out here And again, this is going to be hard while I do it standing up, but um, you can do it on the inside or the outside, whatever you like. I'm just going to stick it on here like this. I use the zigzag stitch for this. You can use a straight stitch probably, but I feel like the zigzag secures it. We're just going to hold it down. Oops, I'm running off the track a little bit here. There we go. Now, if you're good at sewing, this is probably a lot easier for you, but mine never looked that good sewed on there, but uh, you also could just glue this down if you don't have a sewing machine. There we go. And then I just do the same thing on both sides. There we go. That's one done. And then you'll see when you put the signature back inside, it'll be on both sides like that. Oops. I just usually wing it. So maybe we'll put a little lace on.
then we'll just do the same thing on the other side. There's that. Then we'll stick it back in where it belongs. See? That looks nice. And then let's pick where our next one will go. Now this paper is really fragile, so I don't think it's good to sew on that. But I'm going to sew one onto this. Let's see what... I think this nice off tone one. You could put it on the top if you wanted to, but I usually don't. But you totally could. You can do whatever you want. You could just do make them tabs. I'm going to show you tabs in a minute, but if you wanted to use laces tabs, you, you totally can. looks a little rough but it's a junk journal so it's fine it happens then we'll do the other side See, I'm not that great at sewing, so it's a little uneven, but that adds to the charm. Then we'll stick that back in there where it belongs. Keep going. Let's see what else needs some lace. Probably this whole page. Go ahead and use this. Now this one I'm going to do on the inside. side I just turned the light off on the sewing machine because I realized you can probably see better if that's not on I needed to see, but <laughs> for you guys, I'll sacrifice. See how nice that looks? Okay, let's see if there's anything else. We'll probably do one more on here. Use some of this. And I'm going to do this on the outside. Wow, 
God, that was really bad. But it's all on there. So it's fine. <laughs> okay, last side. And then I'll do the rest of them off camera. Except there's one thing I did want to show you. That... Um, I didn't do in this signature, but I might do in another one. But I'll come back to that if... So that's that. We'll put this back in here. Look how beautiful that looks. And then let's move this out of the way. This is how the signature looks. So it looks really cute. Place in there. You can add more or less or... I usually add more than this, I think, but... Just so you get an example and then if I get to uh, sometimes I have ribbon so uh, if I do that I will record it for you real quick but other than that I'm gonna do the rest off camera and then we'll get back to the tabs together and then all we have to do is some stamping and stenciling which I won't show you very much of that so um, this video is already long so see you in a sec okay so I just want to really quickly show you this thing with the ribbon so if you have a ribbon you put it like this can you not see this ribbon maybe i'll pick a different color so that you can see it maybe here's a nice red ribbon okay you can see that put it on like this then we're gonna just push Push it up like this, so it makes a wrinkle. So, and just keep pushing up. So then you'll have something like this. It's cute. Oh. So I just wanted to show you that real quick and I'll be right back and we'll do tabs. Okay, last thing with the sewing machine is we're gonna do a couple tabs. So I take out my scraps here and then we just want pieces that look just kind of like this. Oops. And we need six. You can do as many as you want, but I usually do six. Wait, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. Four. Five. Six. They can be all shapes and sizes, whatever you want. I just, I'm trying to use up my scraps, but you can cut them from anything. 
and you can use lace if you want. So then um, I like to put them on the book pages. So take out the first book page and then pick one. I think we'll do this one. This is a little too big actually. Wow, I can't cut straight at all. But that's okay. It adds character. So we're going to put this somewhere. Hopefully it doesn't block any words. Then we're just going to stick it in. Oop, let me turn this light off. Again with the zigzag stitch, and then we're just gonna go. Across a little bit. And there we go. So then, we'll put that back. And we'll look for the next page. Right here. And pick one that we like. Maybe this one. And then what I like to do is make it a little bit lower than the last one. So the last one's right here. So I'm going to put that one probably about right here. Okay, so you're going to just make it like a little loop. Stick it down. There we go. And then we'll find the third page, which is right here. And we'll pick another one that we like. And again, we're going to try to make it lower than these two. So probably about like right here. Loop it. And so. And I always start like a little bit above. And then go a little bit past. So I just like how that looks. Here we go. So that'll be our little tabs for this. And then if we want, we can you can put them on both sides if you want. So I'll probably do that. Oops, let me zoom back out here. See the little tabs in there? They look cute. You can do them on the other side too, which I'll probably do. And then um, do the same exact thing on the third signature where the other book pages are. And that's that. All we have left is um, stamping, stenciling, and inking, which is pretty self-explanatory, so I'll just kind of rush through that, and then we'll be done. Um, I'll see you sec. Okay, so here we go. Here's all of our laces. Um, you can see the tabs, and I think before I said you need six, but you need six for each signature, so you need 12. This one doesn't have any tabs in it because there's no book pages in it, but then there's tabs on both sides. There, we got all our lace, we did all our sewing around. Now all that's left to do is inking and stamping and stenciling. So, 
we'll get out our ink and some stamps and a couple stencils and I'm just going to show you a few because it's all personal preference and I'm sure you get the gist. So, where did my stamp go? This one's one of my favorite stamps. It's just like a, I don't know, very. So we're actually gonna take it out of the signature to do this. And then we'll go to the back and do the same thing. Stick that back in. There we go. Go to another page that seems kind of dull. Maybe we'll do a little stencil. Beautiful. Then we'll do the opposite up here. There we go. Stick that back in. Then, of course, any pages that you want inking around the edges. I know inking isn't very, like, riveting content, but just in case. Then you do the inside. And then maybe we'll do some more stamping on the inside of this page. There we go. I'm just doing this really quickly to show you like kind of how I do it, but you can take your time, do whatever stamping, stenciling you would like what that looked like and then just do the same thing on the other side I always just repeat the same thing I did on both sides of the paper um, that just makes it a little easier but by all means switch it up do it however you want um, here's a stamp I want to just show you something really quickly. This is something I do a lot. Okay, 
just take the stamp, get it nice and inky, and then go all the way across the bottom. And I usually do one fainter one like that. There we go, just like that. So then when you stick it back in, it looks like this. Could just be simple, just like that. And you can use different colored inks. I tried that once, I didn't really care how, care for how it turned out though, so I don't really do that anymore, but you can do whatever you want. There you go. And that's pretty much it. So, that's one signature done, you can do the rest however you want um i'll just continue that and then we will be totally done all we will have to do left is um bind the thing together and add a few little extra charms and stuff so i'll come back to you when i'm done stamping and i'll just do a quick flip through of what we did today and then we'll be all done okay so, we have successfully done part three, which was decorating the pages. We did sewing. We added tabs. We added lace. We added stamps. And we did stenciling, inking. and um, punching. So we did a lot. This is what the signatures look like now. Just do a quick little run through. Thinking. tabs and lace okay so you can do as little or as much as you want that's the way I do it um, next time we're going to sew the signatures in and we're going to give ourselves a cute little button spine like this one And then, um, then all we have to do is add some dangles, and we will be, um, done with this little golden book. So, I hope you found that helpful. Um, feel free to fast forward through the parts that need to be done, and I'll catch you guys for part four. Um, the final part, soon. Thanks. Bye!